You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mike Benyon Rowe and special guest host Smashby. And that's at that point I realised that I'd become that person that needs to wipe their face just after they... Oh, hello, and welcome to Chewing the Cud. This week I'm joined by the bundle of high energy that is Smashby. Hi, Hi honeys! Welcome to Chewing the Cud. <laughs> are, you, are you doing well? I'm doing fabulous. It's my time to shine, honey. Summer's here, Michael Bublé's back in the freezer, and it's my time to come out in the pride scene. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't keep Michael Bublé in the, in the freezer. It's my personal freezer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. There's a story there. Um, and what, have you got, what have you got for us this week? This week, I'm talking about an interruption to a live TV show, and then we have a game to play in our game of the week. And that's before we get all up close and personal with Smash Me. On the screen now, you can see all of our social media info. Just look for at the Cud TV. And as the people who popped up in our comments go along the bottom of the screen, it's time for Mike in the buzz. Record that as well, so I now have you just doing this. <laughs> just strumming my guitar. <laughs> so, relationships. God, honestly. <laughs> are, we, are we not a fan of relationships? I've never had one. Never had a relationship? No, because I'm saving myself for marriage. I'm not. Um, <laughs> I just... You I, yawned as you walked in. I know. <laughs> no, no, no. I've never had one. And I feel like when you've gone so long without having one, mm -hmm. your standards get too high. Okay. So now it's giving, like, I need some extra special. And that's not going to happen in the male species. So I'm just, like, retiring early. I'm giving up. <laughs> okay, Michael Bublé not... I mean, you know, if he pulls out the freezer, I'll think about it. Okay, cool. Um, well, there's a new thing in dating called micro-cheating. Okay. Okay, which is not what I first thought, which is really small penises. Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no same. It's, it's about having, um, basically, flirtations with other people. Like, minuscule amounts of cheating. Like, tiny little, you know, it's barely cheating. But some people are saying, is this cheating? Is it like those religious people that can't have sex before marriage, so they just kind of rub up against the walls, and it's not really... Cheating. It's like that. That's Ru cheating. People that run up against what? Yeah, like, they don't put it in, it's okay. not cheating, but they just kind of drive. If you don't put it in, it's not cheating. I think so. That's the okay. rule here. Something I'm going to write that to take down. Take home. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't put it in, it doesn't make you gay. Anyway, well, um, you keep socks on as well. That's a thing too. Really? Apparently so. <laughs> <laughs> if you keep your socks on, it doesn't make you gay. Okay. I'm going to be telling the married Depends on the socks, I think, not going to lie. <laughs> if they're like, I'm gay socks, then yeah, sure, you're pretty gay. If they're like, I don't know, some big woolly ones, you're straight, you're fine. <laughs> so yeah, and there's also different signs that you're doing micro-cheating. Uh -huh. Okay, so things like, do you smile when you text someone or get a text from them? Uh, it depends on the fresh Botox injections, to be honest. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. If you were going to smile, could you? Would be the. Depends that, on the that day. Was, that was a smile. That was a. That was a smile. Well, was a really tense. Yeah. <laughs> no, I can't. Actually. Almost a smile. Help. Almost. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So not being having had a relationship, you've never experienced micro cheating. Uh, no, I've probably been the other one they've been cheating with and not known about it. Okay. Um, but. Sue me, can't blame me for that, you know. <laughs> can't blame the mistress. No, exactly. I've said, can't exactly. blame the mistress. Yeah, exactly. Especially the blind one, I had no idea. <laughs> what are you get up to in the privacy of your own? Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Um, we had the pandemic of um, coronavirus. Uh -huh. and that happened, okay. Panny day. We've had um, swine flu pandemics. You know that? Oh, yeah, yes. I've got my swine flu. All right, some of us are there. <laughs> um, and also did you get flu. swine flu? I did get swine flu. Did you? Yeah, yeah. So it actually got to people. I thought it just stayed in pigs. Like, no, I thought no, it never no, got it, past it, pigs. It properly wiped me out. <gasps> yeah. Wow. I know. I was, and I was staying with her. I had a housemate at the time. I was staying at her house, and she was very anti-germ. Really? I, I, was, I was left in the ground floor. No. She just kicked you out of the car. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. Like a little pig pen to put you in, so you could be with your own kind. <laughs> She's not actually, it doesn't make you a pig. Oh. Oh, different flu. Never yeah. mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, bird flu is making resurgence. Oh. That doesn't make you a bird. Doesn't make you a bird. Um, right. Yeah. And it it's also doesn't mean you can't eat chicken nuggets. You're fine. Well, thank God, because it's my favourite food, honestly. I'd be screwed. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually stopping people cuddling cows, though. Right. I don't normally do that anyway. Do, you people, do people cuddle cows? No, you've not heard about cow cuddling. No. Is it because is it you're chewing the cud that you cuddle cows a lot? No, 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 no. It's a genuine thing. It's a therapy thing. Oh. Right. So people with sort of like depression, anxiety, go out to a farm and uh -huh. cuddle cows. 
Oh, that's cute. I should yeah. give that a go. I could really do with it. Absolutely. <laughs> There's some goats in there as well because that's, oh. yeah, why not? Have I actually couldn't tell the difference, not going to lie. So. The, the cow is the big black and white thing. Mm -hmm. The goat is a little brown thing. Cute. And the thing in the middle is a person. Oh, okay. Um, that one, yeah, <laughs> blended right in. Exactly. Can tell. Um, but cow cuddling is a, a big therapy thing because they're, they're so docile and quite loving and quite tender. Oh, that is really cute. I want to go and cuddle a cow right now. Like, you want to, you want to do After it. this show, I'm going to need it. Yeah, they're, 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 <laughs> Definitely will. Um, but yeah, can't because of swine flu. They've got swine flu? No, be um, not swine flu. I see, I'm talking about swine flu. <laughs> um, we well, can't because of um, bird flu, because they don't want to spread it. The cows don't want to spread the bird flu. Well, pe the farmers don't want the cows to spread the bird flu. Oh, got you. Okay, very considerate of cows, I was going to say. Yeah, the cow going, no, no, no. Oh, I may have, I had a bit of a sniffle a couple of days ago. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what the farmers are doing when they're swapping. Well... Um, um, well <laughs> <laughs> it's not just a good time. I don't drink cow's milk, honestly. Really? No. Oh, right, okay. I taste it from the oats. It's the oat milk I'm on about. <laughs> I squeeze the oats myself and make my own oat milk. <laughs> There's a euphemism there, and I can't go for it. It's just too wrong. Um, it's too close. It's just too close. And if you're getting too close with oats, um, why not share that with us at the Could TV on social media? And now that brings us to our story of the week. Now... Pollution is everywhere these days, mm -hmm. yeah, especially when it gets warm. Farting. Um, no, car pollution. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, when you go outside, you know, there's that smog and stuff. Yeah. And so in China, they have they have trucks that go around spraying water. OK, that's cute. To try Give them a little wash. Gives, gives the air a bit of a fresh Water one. bills are high. That's quite generous, I think, to be honest. What's even better, though, is that... Um, now, one of the side effects of this spraying water mm -hmm. is that some people have gone, hang on a minute, they're spreading gayness because the spraying of water is also spraying rainbows. Well... So as, as they're spraying the water, rainbows are appearing behind See, the apparently trucks. that's what I'm doing on my college tours for LGBT History Month. I'm okay. spraying the gayness to all the kids by existing. Um, kind of love that, honestly. I'd be thankful. I'd be like, thank you. I'm doing charity work right there. Exactly. Yeah, it's giving pride. <laughs> <laughs> RuPaul should be driving the truck, honestly. RuPaul probably is driving the she truck. She is driving the truck. Charging a small fortune for it. It's giving AJ and the Queen in her little camper van. Did you watch that? I really didn't enjoy that. Did you not? Did not enjoy I like it. cheesy shit shows. I like, I like cheesy. Mm -hmm. And I thought for the first maybe two episodes was good. And then it kind of... And, and the evil boyfriend was hot. Oh my god, he was so hot! <laughs> yeah, he was hot. Viewing pleasure alone, honestly. Exactly, but then, then it was like going, okay, the plot's a bit thin now. Let's move yeah, it along. Um, Let's move it along. I get that. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, th I thought that was really cute, the fact that freshening up the, the actual the air. Yeah, and spreading the rainbow. Spreading it's the giving rainbow. the gay gender. I'm here for it. It is, yeah. Mm -hmm. We won't tell the straight people about it. They're on to us. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's all from The Buzz this week. Thanks for that, Mike. And if you want to see me spreading gayness, come check me out at the Pride Tour this summer. <laughs> and if you want to see my gayness being spread, sign up for my <laughs> OnlyFans. But coming up after this short break, Smash Me brings us a look at some celebrity news in the showbiz. <laughs> You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mike and Smashby. Now let's get ready for the showbiz with Smashby. So this week, Elon Musk tweeted JK Rowling to lighten up the anti-trans tweets. Really? Now, if that's not a sign to shut your mouth, I don't know what is. <laughs> Even Elon himself, who's a transphobe, is like, give it a rest, honey. Honestly, we're all sick of her. <laughs> I I'm so hoping he said it like that. They look related, do you not think? They both look like It's hostiles. giving turf. I think that's what it yeah. is. That's the relation. Yeah, I, I love the fact that someone's tried to set her on fire. Haven't we all? In oh, our dreams. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Allegedly. And, um, and, and the, the, the Pride Progress flag. Behind Elon there. I think Elon's secretly obsessed with the gays and the whole I, community. I mean, yes, because there's a lot of gays on Twitter. He, exactly. Oh my God, exactly. And he looks like the kind of guy that would slide in my DMs and be like, are you looking for a sugar daddy? Like, that's the vibe. And he has the money to do it. Too, I'd be so. saying yes. Loki same. Um, <laughs> not even Loki. I'm not even going to pretend. I say. I've got bills to pay and exactly. so can make. Do you know what I mean? Elon Musk says... Oh. I will quite happily, all right then, give us some cash. Do you know it'd be good if he was into the whole dominatrix thing, we could just like spit on him and slap him and be like, tell him to do one and get paid for it. What a great job. <laughs> <laughs> You've thought about that before. Mm, maybe a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so the question is, 
Did J.K. Rowling shut up or has she kept going with her vitriol? I think she'll keep going, like, into the abyss. She'll just keep wishing on forever. And I just hope at some point she just, like, disappears into infinity, like a little pile of dust. Okay. I mean, I know that um, earlier in the month, Elon had, like, re-established the thing that said that you can um, get people blocked for dead naming. Yeah, because I think he removed the option to report someone for dead naming and misgendering somebody on X. Whatever. Twitter. We're, we're yeah, yeah, Twitter, thank you. <laughs> X Factor, uh, it's been and gone, girl. Um, but then it's been reinstated, apparently. Mm -hmm. Do you think it actually was him or just someone on the team that was like, you kind of have to do this? Like, I, I think so, so, someone's reinstated it and not told him. I hope so. <laughs> I hope he has no idea as well. And he's just like in his little pool of money, like unaware that people are getting re reported for being <laughs> toughs. I hope he has no idea and just keeps on going. Yeah. Until he says something and someone reports him. Oh, and then his account gets taken down, and then it's the end of Elon Musk. I can't wait. <laughs> I don't think it would be the end of Elon Musk, unfortunately. Can, I can dream. Yeah. I'm a manifester. I'm a positive <laughs> girly, you know. <laughs> yeah, cool. So, yeah, I, I, I think that's a, good that he's, he's told her to, to shut the f up, basically. I agree. It's long overdue. Maybe now he can, like, take the steps to um, build a relationship with his trans child and actually start being a decent parent for once. That'd be a good idea, Elon. <laughs> yeah, that would be quite good. Parenting tips with Smash B. <laughs> Moving on to our next topic, it's Eurovision week, and the grinder noise is making headlines. It is popping ping pong pong all over the whole Eurovision live well, finals. Are we surprised? No it's, no, it's nothing but gays at Eurovision. It's literally <laughs> the gayest show on earth. Like, I'd be concerned if there was no grinder notifications going off. Hello. They should sponsor it at this point, honestly. <laughs> A little grinder like mask in the corner. I it think would make that would sense. Be Welcome to Eurovision by Grinder. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> there we go. I could as do it the for points, them. As the points come up. Each time they get a point. <laughs> UK, nil points. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I think they just get on there. You're welcome, Eurovision. <laughs> so this is the story about the guy that was on Eurovision that is got interrupted by Grinder, though, wasn't it? Was it a presenter? I didn't see. So he, he was there. Oh, he was getting interviewed and it went off. Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean it. I hope you don't like check it and show it on camera who was popping off. <laughs> I want to see. Don't tease us, girl. I want to see what happens next. I have this sneaky suspicion. Is that gentleman in the background with the beard? Because he looks mischievous. Oh, and you know what? I would answer really quickly if that was him. <laughs> I'm like, one second lady with the mic. Do -do 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 -do. And we're back. <laughs> Has Grindr ever gone off with you in an inappropriate situation? I got rid of Grindr a couple of years okay. ago when I started on the prior circuit because I just didn't want it popping, popping off during my sets. Uh, <laughs> you know, you can just mute your phone. You can mute your phone. That'd be sensible to do. I just <laughs> the whole app. Um, it's never gone off in a bad situation, I feel like. Um, I have had a crazy situation where I was having a hug up with someone and their boyfriend was calling their phone at the same time. Okay. That was an inconvenience and a bit of an awkward situation. That's an inconvenience. Yeah. <laughs> like um, that. That's Thank how you. I found well, it. You answer boyfriend. the phone and tell him to you give him two minutes. Yeah. And you'll <laughs> <laughs> literally let him know you're busy. And thanks for telling me you had a boyfriend in the first place. Thanks so much. Beautiful. <laughs> but yeah, no embarrassing grind up moments. What about you? Oh, always. Really? Always. My favourite one was actually in a work interview. Oh, so I was gorgeous. interviewing someone, uh -huh. right? And I, I normally have my phone on Do Not Disturb. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like chatting away, and they're going, "Okay, so can you talk about a time when?" And then my phone. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Did they know what it was? Because if they knew what it was, I'd be like, "Why do you know what that sound is, girl?" Where was the job interview for? Something really gay? Or... Uh, no, it's call centre. And did they know what the sound was? They knew what the sound was. Of course they did. Uh -huh. <laughs> I managed to pass it off on somebody else's phone, which I thought was brilliant. You're like who? Stinging off in this in this meeting right now. It's so <laughs> rude during my interview, girl. I turned around to apologise and said, "I'm really sorry about that. I had to take someone's phone off them before." <laughs> <laughs> Love it. It's like a lie. We yeah. all lie. You got to do. Yeah. Got to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wonder, you know, because like Rylan and Scott Mills doing the whole um, commentating this mm -hmm. year for us for Eurovision. I wonder if one of their phones could like ping off with a grand notification that could make history. Well, I was going to say, I think it might might more likely be Rylan than Scott because Scott's um, engaged. To be married, a uh, man. Yes, could still happen. <laughs> <laughs> like that. That means uh, it doesn't mean anything, Mike. It could still happen, but I could see Rylan's popping off as well. And like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe on scruff as well. Rylan gives me scruff energy for sure. Scruff and we have bumble girly for Rylan. I could see okay, that. Do yeah. guys do bumble? I don't have bumble, but I, I've done bumble before. You did my bumble? Yeah. I guess I've I. done. I've done them. I've, have you not seen my phone? I do them all. <laughs> Let's look at all my, my dating apps. And review. We them. say the word dating very liberally. Though. Very loosely. Um, I, I call them networking applications. Well, you know, you can. I was thinking of um, promoting my new single on Grinder because hello, what a great 
campaign. This, 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 this. <gasps> you got so, are these all really? Uh -huh. I didn't know there were so many. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I need all these so I can make a list of my next single campaign and uh -huh. do little adverts and all these thingies because <laughs> that's my target audience. Hello. What a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> what a good idea for being sad and alone like that. <laughs> um, also this week, Lucas Cage only realised he was gay from hooking up with his neighbour, hot. That is like my dream ideal situation. My God, he's not unattractive either. No, he's gorgeous. He's literally gorgeous. And I read in the story too, he was like gaming with his mm -hmm. neighbour. I'm not a gaming girl, but the thought of it being... Oh, so cute, honestly. But like the thought of being with like your kind of like hetty bro neighbor you're playing video games and you're like i think he said in the quote i'm just gonna make out with you now and it just happened mm -hmm. that's giving like a heart stopper-esque moment and i think we're all looking for that i was heart stopper slash porn well see honestly <laughs> um it's giving heart stopper after dark <laughs> yeah, yeah but um what a hot moment but i'm not a video game girly so i don't know how i'd get into that situation netflix Netflix and chill, or maybe like let's do karaoke. That'd be more me. <laughs> or like the the just dance app. That could be the just dance game. That's how I probably get into it. Just Very dance. maybe like a Britney song on just dance, and then it kind of goes into a whole let's hook up. <laughs> what about you, honey? Have you ever had like a whole video gaming let's hook up experience? Are you a video uh, game girly or? I, I used to be a video game person. What was your game of like choice? I'm not saying that because people will be going, "You're how old?" So is it Simpsons Hit and Run? It's older than that. Really? I had a PS1 when they came out. Did you? I think I had a PS2. I'm the generation after you. Mm -hmm. um, there's several generations after me. <laughs> Being generous, <laughs> though. <laughs> um, yeah, Crash Bandit Bandicoot. Yeah, not a clue. Um, Grand Theft Auto on the computer. I've heard of Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, the original. Yeah, not, oh, not, the OG Grand Theft Auto. On a computer. Um, Command and Conquer. Yeah, not a clue. That sounds like porn to me. Yeah, well, hmm. Command and Conquer. I'm like, uh -huh. okay, girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, he, what was it he was in recently that I watched? It Is it White Lotus? Lotus? No, there was something else. I've only seen him in White Lotus. Way thing. He did. Um, oh, the dead, the dead boy thing. The dead, dead boy, boy agency. Thing. Dead boy agency. Yeah, dead boy, De dead boy detective agency. Yeah, on Netflix. Never seen and it's it. It's about two very, very queer esque ghosts. Ooh. Queer ghosts. Queer esque ghosts. So Queer -esque. Okay, so like, and then they're the ones from like the turn of the nineteen hundreds who's like gay but can't say it. And stuff okay. And falls in love and he's the cat king. The cat king, what is that? Cat king. Cat king. Cat. King of cats. Yeah. All right. And he, he basically has like um cat eyes in and his hair slipped back and his chest out and like a fur coat on and Oh. She's kinda of giving furry. Oh <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of a cat king in my life. Oh no, he was he was he was not unattractive, shall we say? Well, I'm gonna go and watch that when I get home. Yes, <laughs> there was a reason why I watched that in bed. I bet, I bet there was. He is super cute. He went out with um Kim Kardashian's like bestie too, didn't he? Her makeup artist. They, really? Yeah. Is that, they, is that the one he married? Yes, they married and then they divorced real quick. Yeah, yeah. Like Henry VIII. <laughs> like a real good turnaround. Yeah, for sure. Henry the oh, that's the thing about I could say about head, but I'm not going to. Well, uh, Henry the <laughs> Well, he beheaded people, didn't Well, there's that too, actually, yeah. yeah. He loved oh, a bit of beheading. Off with his head, well, on with it. Wow. Well, um, yeah. But yeah, thanks for that smash. <laughs> You're so welcome. <laughs> and that's all from the showbiz news. Perfect, thank you very much, Smashby. Always nice to know that, you know, someone's getting head. If it's <laughs> the eighth. One of us has to, girl. Uh, well, stick around, because <laughs> coming up, look at me preparing my arms. Like, <laughs> You're like, do you know what? I've had enough of this. <laughs> Disrespect me, just because I'm old. <laughs> Oh, no, no. I, I was making a fisting reference. Oh. Um, coming up next, we have our game of the week. <laughs> You're watching Chew in the Cud, and this week we're going to play a game of Lazy Susan's Question Roulette. And this is for our very own Smash Me. So, off you pop. Oh, um, I gotta go? Yeah, shoo, go away. Game of the week. So we've got Smash B in the special area. Um, who's got the Susan in front of him, so he's gonna give that a spin, ask me a question, and see how we get on. Are you ready, Smash B? Born ready, honey. Let's give it a cheeky little spin. Oh, we've got sound effects, too. Ew, sport, right. Oh wait, sorry, I'm not supposed to tell you, am I? No, no, you're not supposed to tell me. Am I? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ew, sport. <laughs> Don't tell me the answer to the question, it's fine. Oh, no, I understand. Okay. 
Okay, ready? We've got a sports question for our sports girlies. Okay. I could never be a sports girly. I don't know, I like some of the outfits. Oh my god! How's anyone gonna get this? Okay. Um, <laughs> complete the boxer's name. Arturo? D2. I'm gonna have a question. Um, it says another name in quotations. Is that the rest of the name? Okay. Number one. Mm -hmm. Arturo Thunder. Arturo Thunderdome. That's a good one. Thunderdome's good. Yeah. But no, you're wrong. <laughs> Tina Turner. <laughs> we don't need another hero. Yeah. Um, no, but good drag name. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, what was the answer? The answer was Gatti. I feel like this sports question is going to set us up for a, okay. uh, for a real one. <laughs> but let's keep, do we keep going or is it just one from that one? It's up to you. We can keep going if you want. I feel like everyone's going to get real bored with that real quickly. Okay, let's spin it in. I think we should get rid of the sports one. Okay. Okay. Give it another spin then. A little spin, spin, spin. <laughs> I wish I had my songs playing in the background for this. <laughs> oh no. General knowledge. General knowledge. Okay, cool. Not my strong suit. I'm glad you're answering the question. <laughs> Not me. I'm quite general. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Um, it's too easy. Okay. Anyway. What village in Somerset is famous for its cheese? You should know this, honey, because you love your cheese. I do love cheese. Philadelphia. No. <laughs> Okay. Guess again. Okay, guess again. Somewhere at Edam. Edam? Edam. Is that a place? Yeah. Well, it's in Holland, though. Okay. You're damn wrong. Um, You're e damn wrong. <laughs> um, good. No, it's Holland. Um, Camembert is French. Um, cheddar? Ding, ding, ding! Yay! You got a winner, honey! Finally! And it's oh, run out of all the other cheeses. <laughs> That was a point for you. Yay! Well done, we got the... Okay, spin, 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 Don't you dare. Okay, it's kind of a middle, so just do it again. No, just pick one. Okay, it's general knowledge again. Okay. Okay. Back to the Jenny Nodge. Let's carry on. Jenny Nodge. Jenny Nodge. That's my new drag name. Jenny Nodge? Jenny Nodge. Way, that's such a good drag name. You're welcome. She's appearing on Canal Street next week. Okay. It's actually not my drag. My drag name is I want a cockatoo. I want love that, Anna. So don't we all, her name? Right. Mm. Okay. Right. What is the most common street name in Britain? Most common street name. Mm. And it's not your name, babe. I'm not a street. You're common now. <laughs> and I have had a lot of through traffic. Oh, um, cool. She's been run through. <laughs> she's, when I'm lucky, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, most common, um, Elm Avenue. No. Guess again. <laughs> high Street. Ding, 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 we got a winner! She's a High Street girly. Which is not high end. Okay. <laughs> so mean. Okay, do you know the spin spin, man? Why not? Spinny win win, let's have a little spin for the win. I hope we get something music related or oh, sports. Sports, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I can't <laughs> have questions. Oh, it's on movies. Oh, my God. Okay. Did you just cheat? No. The wind blew in. Movies, movies, movies. Okay. Right. Okay. Name the film that these characters appear in. So easy. Okay. Simba. Simba, the Lion King. Yes! Ding, ding, ding! We love a Disney question, honestly. Yes. I wish I got that one. Okay. Good for you. How many more spins do you want to go, babes? Just keep going. Okay. Just keep going. Another spin for the win, honey. There's something music related as well. Oh, right, we've got a sports one. <laughs> <laughs> Are you not cheating this time? Okay. No, I'm just going to embrace the sports moment. It might be like which football I have I hooked up with, and then it'd be an interesting question. Um... And the answer to that is? <laughs> what? Someone's calling. <born. laughs> <laughs> I've actually got to go. I'm really sorry. Um, <laughs> complete the football team. Red Bull. Red Bull? Mm, Red Bull. <laughs> Red Bull is the star of the name of the football team. Now, according, sure? according to my art house DVDs. Porn. <laughs> um, Red Bull Warriors. No, but that sounds kind of like fun and American. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> no. 
Do you want to guess again? Yeah, um, the Red Bull squad. No, but the beginning letter is right. That's a hint. The Red Bull sports ball team. No. Go sports ball. It's the Red Bull Salzburg. Oh, Salzburg. Is that, yeah. is that like a normal terminology in sports? It's, no, Salzburg's a place. Well, I don't do geography either, so... Okay. So. <laughs> spin, spin, spin for the win, honeys. Do, 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 do. Okay. Oh, 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 we're on music! Okay, my favourite topic ever. If I'm not in the question, I'm not interested. Okay. So you're not interested then? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Me? Do I know any of this? Whatever. Okay. Com complete the band name. Jerry and the... Atrix. No, but that is good as well. Let's give you a drag name too. Yeah, I, no, I don't want to be geriatric. I think that's all Almost drag there, baby. That's all <laughs> drag act. I'm ignoring that. <laughs> Another guest, babes? Um, Jerry and the... Jerry and the... Okay, it's not. <laughs> I was about to say Jerry and the Adams, but that's... Jerry and the Adams. No, not No. Um, Jerry and the Pacemakers. <gasps> you got it right! Oh my god, it's Jerry and the Pacemakers! Did you know that? I did know that. Did you? Jerry and the Pacemakers is a very old band. I was just going to say, it's what they used to make babies with, you know, so let's give it a little head start. Do you make babies with a pacemaker? You do, no, a pacemaker's a heart thing. So when people well, have heart attacks, um, a baster? Turkey baster, that's what I'm thinking of. Turkey baster, <laughs> same thing. Same thing, different day, do you know what I mean? Multiple uses for all these things, honey. <laughs> that's a life hack for you at home. <laughs> Let's have another question. Another spin for the win, honeys. Oh, crrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
yeah, yeah, yeah. If I, I oh, get yeah. to know your name. Um, Big Brother uh, icon. What, what else? Um, Frankie goes to Hollywood. With his girls? Mm. Never heard him speak. Just saying. <laughs> exactly. Anyway. Um, what are you guessing? Well, yeah, the Beatles. <gasps> it is the Beatles! Ding, ding, ding! Hey. Sexiest bug around. <laughs> okay. Another spin, babes. We're spinning that way on. I'm accepting fate. I got a sports question. Do you know what? It's what it is. You know what? I'm going to save you from it. I think we should go to a break. So stick oh. around because coming up next, we're going to get intimately aware of, of, of Smash B. <laughs> and everyone's already of cues not aware, honestly. <laughs> Don't worry. I think we're going to stop there. I'll save you from that. Um, <laughs> stick around because coming up after the break, we're going to get intimately acquainted with Smash B in Spotlight. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. And now we're going to probe him deeply, but with <gasps> consent, so it's okay. It's Spotlight with Smash B. So welcome to the singer extraordinaire Smash B. Hi, that's me. It's Smash B, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany did that. She did do that, and I stole it, and I keep ripping it off, so... Just if she wants me to stop, she has to write to me personally, and then I'll stop doing it. <laughs> Our lawyers might. I'll stop doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to shave your hair off first. Anyway. Um, so, um, for people that aren't aware of your musical style, mm. how would we describe your music? Do you know what? It's always ever changing. It's always in that pop like bracket. I'm always kind of doing different stuff, like dancey pop. I write some country pop at the moment. Country pop. Um, a little bit of everything. Yeah, just all kinds of um, anything pop and. Gay, really. So it's always a little bit high energy. Don't get many ballads out of you. You don't get many ballads out, but it doesn't mean they don't exist. I write a lot of them, maybe sharing some of them soon, but a lot of it's most high energy and stuff. So that's what I'm known for anyway. Oh, and where'd you get that inspiration for the high energy songs from? Um, well, when I was like growing up, I used to write pop songs to gain confidence and to like right. manifest being that confident bitch that like didn't give a fuck what anybody thought. I just won so much then, I'm so sorry. Um, but I used to write the confidence anthems to manifest that kind of personality. And then I got there. And so now I hopefully do that for other people at Prides and stuff. Anyone that follows me on socials and listens to my songs is to give them confidence too. So that's the vibe, it's the energy. Okay, and you said that you know you you were thinking about advertising on Grinder before. Oh well, I'm not it yet, but I want to. I think it's a genius marketing strategy, so I need to get on that. Is it very much a, um, like the LGBTQIA plus community aiming your music for, or? It's it's actually not. I kind of I think I just make pop music that is very much radio esque pop music, but it's um I think it's more relatable for queer people because I'm writing from like a queer experience, you know. So there's more topics in my music they could relate to, like you know uh, rejection and things like that, and um. Coming out, I've written songs about kind of coming out and being scared to be yourself before. I think anyone can relate to that, but especially people in the queer umbrella. So, yeah. Okay, so very much a, a you know, experience led. Mm -hmm. thing. Um, have you ever had to come up with a, a song where you've not had that experience or you've gone down a, a rabbit hole of a, th a song and gone, hmm, this isn't really me? Oh, a song that I think isn't written for me? Uh -huh. um, well, I've written a song before that was intended for Dua Lipa. Okay. Um, she never did it. <laughs> but it was for like a TV show where it was like a bunch of songwriters write a song for an artist in mind and they have to kind of showcase it to that artist and compete to get it there with the show never got commissioned. And um, I wrote the song for Dua Lipa and it's my song called Living Without You. And it was the first time I wrote a song that was kind of about something like that, living without somebody, writing with somebody else in mind. And I actually loved the song so much I kept it and released it myself. You've gone without a trace Out of sight, baby, out of mind Maybe another time or place Or we can go, but I'm Getting used to living without you Getting used to living without you 
Um, so I've kind of had an experience with that. And then last year, Austin Armacost asked me to write him a song because he really wanted to do like a, a kind of draggy themed pop song. So he gave me a bunch of like lyrics and bullet points and I made it into like a pop song. And then I gave it to him and he's like, can you do all the singing? And I was like, yeah, sure, that's fine. <laughs> so I did most of the recording on it, but he got to have his pop star moment and feature and like a, on a, on a fun draggy pop song. So yeah, so I kind of did that with Austin in mind too, I guess. Nice. Yeah. I, and have you ever if you performed with anybody else that you might have heard of? Performed to anybody else? No, with anybody else. So any? Oh, any uh, like me that? and David Acampo have done a few tracks together. We love DDC. Uh, I love DDC. She's fabulous. We did um, a collaboration together called Make a Scene in 2021, and then I got her on the song with Austin as well because it was a draggy themed song. Uh -huh. So it needed a drag queen on there to bring it to life and make it feel authentic. So. And who else would you pick other than? Davina DeCampo. If I could work with anybody? Mm -hmm. um, if I could, my dream is obviously Britney Spears, for sure. Um, uh, she's my dream club, but she's retired, so maybe not. Um, well, she's retired for now. For now. I, I think in five or ten years, she's going to go in. She'll come back. I need some money. She'll do a share. And I'll be here for it, and I will fund <laughs> that comeback, honestly. But um, if I could club with anybody right now that I really want to... Um, I love Miley Cyrus. I think she's like the biggest icon ever. So that's a dream collab. Okay, what about Jojo Siwa? Because she believes she's. You know what? I'm actually kind of here for it. She's doing Mighty Hoopla, did you see? She's um, been confirmed for the Mighty Hoopla this year because oh. of Karma's a bitch. And I want to do it. I want to do Karma's a bitch remix with Jojo Siwa. So, Jojo, <laughs> hit me up. I'm available. All pride. <laughs> <laughs> And you mentioned about doing prides and things. Uh, do you just exclusively do prides? No, I do uh, anything that bugs me, to be honest. But my <laughs> my most like thing I'm known for is the pride tours that I do because I do. I'm very very blessed to get booked like across the whole country, and it kind of becomes a whole tour. But I do other kind of tours. I do a lot of college and school performances as well. Sometimes I do like talks and things on like LGBT History Month, and do a couple of songs in there. And that just got me in a lot of trouble because loads of people think you shouldn't be doing. LGBT History Month talks in colleges for 16 plus, 16 plus students because it's going to brainwash them. How did that get you in trouble, though? Uh, it went viral. I had like, millions of views on it and all the parents saying I was brainwashing their kids. But I was singing... I actually kind of was brainwashing the kids because I was singing Taylor Swift songs. So I was brainwashing them to like Taylor Swift. <laughs> so I'm guilty of that, for sure. But I'm gil surprised Taylor Swift hasn't sued you. I know. <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting for the season to cease, honestly. But, um, but guilty for, like... Not guilty for um, brainwashing them to be gay. It just didn't work like that. I was always saying, as well, we grew up with very straight media. Mm -hmm. So if that didn't work on us, to come straight out. I think my gay ass is going to make them turn gay, you know. Unless it's undercover and they just don't know it yet. Okay, cool. Um, and so was that, where, where was that featured? Was that a... a oh, TikTok. Instagram? TikTok. So it was TikTok that was popping off. TikTok's a crazy place. It, but um, yeah, we've got a few million viewers in there. So that was kind of fun, kind of slay. You're going to be keep reposting it. Just Absolutely. Like, yeah. <laughs> and every month it's recycle, recycle. And I'm literally doing some more college shows again for Pride Month and stuff. So I'm excited to get hate crime all over again. <laughs> okay. uh, which kind of college did you go into? Are going to just be all over the country or? Random ones, up and down. Um, yeah, up and down anywhere that bugs me really. So a lot in the north as well, a lot in the north. So I did Keithley College okay, as well. Cool. That's like not far from me because I'm a Leeds girl. Um, and that was interesting, went down really well. So who'd have thought it? <laughs> okay, and you, did you ever go back to your own schools and things? Um, I did that years ago. I feel like the older I get, the more scared I get to go back to like schools I went to because it feels like, ah, like, I'm more myself now, if anything, because it's, mm -hmm. like, freaky. But I would do it. I'd, anything that's going to pay me and be there, I'll be there, to be honest. <laughs> like, I'll be there. You just give me the check. But I also care about helping the people. Yeah, but the, the check's important. Very important. Yeah, just not sure why you're going on here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still waiting for that, that check, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah keep, you keep waiting. <laughs> <laughs> so, so pride's a big thing for you. Yes. It's like reaching out to the LGBTQIA plus community that, you know, mm. maybe the support and things, sure. and having songs. Um, where would we find your music? You can find my music on all the major music platforms, darling, on all the Spotify, all the iTunes, all those things. Um, I can sell CDs in the street corner if you like me too, my other side hustle. Um, <laughs> I can sign them with my tits. Um, that's a thing. Yeah, any way you <laughs> Is want it really? them. Yeah, sure. Something else. People have like band camp, I have bussy camp, and that's where I <laughs> sell my <laughs> X-rated music. <laughs> bussy camp. That's my new album name, Bussy Camp. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So if someone wanted to get into writing music, uh -huh. how would you recommend they do that? I would definitely recommend going off like a personal experience because it's your own personal experience. You've got so much to, to delve into, you know. Um, so I would bullet point normally something that I'm about that experience. I bullet point things that have happened with that, that experience. Um, say if it's about a boy, mm. um, I write about that boy, his qualities that I'm in love with, I'm obsessed with, um, what upsets me about him, 
things that only we would have in common, and you kind of got references then to put into lyrics, and a rhyme's always good, a rhyme goes a long way, you know, so make it catchy, and um, make keep it real, too. I think, make it authentic. Okay, and do you ever, you know, you write your own lyrics, do you write your own songs as well, your tunes? Well? Yeah, I write all my own songs. Normally I write actually with no instruments. I write like, um, I'll write something in my head, I'll get a click beat up on my phone, I'll record into my click beat um, the whole song, verse, chorus, bridge, everything, harmonies, and most of the time as well. I can figure out the whole structure in my head, and then I'll take it to a producer and say, this is the song, can we make this okay. as close to what I've recorded as possible? And then we build around it that way. Okay, cool. So do you actually play instruments or is it all just from your mind? I did piano when I was younger and I learned basically, and I can do basic chords, but I've not kept it up and I think my, my skills have definitely dropped with my IQ, so... And my tits, so... Again with the age references, why do people keep calling me old? <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. And, and do you ever, you, know, you send that over to your producer, mm. do you ever sort of get someone else to come and write songs for you? Um, I've never had someone write for me. I've had people write with me. I've done co-writing mm -hmm. sessions the past couple of years. I've been co-writing with like um, Natalie Mack and Pelican, and they write a lot of music for like um, Sony and Universal and stuff. So I've been co-writing the past couple of years with them, um, which I've loved, and we've got some absolute bangers. Um, so that's been really, really fun too. But I do find I get as well. Um, yeah, I get a lot from working with other people. I can learn a lot. So yeah, so I love doing that too. Okay, cool, perfect. And if we wanted to find you on social media, how would we find you? You can find me on socials at Smash B Official. So Smash, like you're smashing something. B Y Official, and um, and only uh, maybe not OnlyFans. Never know. Maybe not that one. Only the one. Do we have an OnlyFans? No. If if the Pride Tour stops paying me, then maybe I'll have to go. <laughs> OnlyFans. But please keep booking me. <laughs> Perfect. So Pride Tours. Where are you going to be next? With the Pride Tour, um, the next stop is on the 25th of May. I'm uh, doing Barrow Pride. My friend Davina's is going to be there too. Mm -hmm. um, so Barrow Pride and Barrow and Furness, and then heading straight to Bolton Pride on the same day, doing Bolton Pride. And then a couple weeks after, I've got some college shows in between, and then I'm doing Rotherham Pride, which I'm so excited to go back to Rotherham because that was my first headlining Pride gig, I think, ever okay. in 2019. And it's not been on since then because of like funding and COVID and stuff. And now it's back, and so am I. And I'm so excited to come back. So I can't wait. Okay, perfect. And so if we wanted to hit you at a Pride, how would we find you? Um, you'll find all those dates on my social media, my Instagram, my Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, everything. You'll find my dates every month on my socials. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And we would love to have you back on the show some other time. I'd love to come back. I love coming back. It's like my second home now. <laughs> I've got a little corner where I just sleep. It's fine on the disco balls. It's, it's true. It's not even a lie. It's true. We do it's actually true. have a little camp. They keep me in a cage in the corner. <laughs> so keep you asked for it. But uh, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, thank you very much for coming on Smash B. <laughs> Thanks for having me, honeys. That's almost the end of the show. Just remember to join us on our social media at The Cud TV. Thank you for watching, and we will see you all soon. Bye, Bye. honeys! So, I was literally dunking. Okay. It's wild. Okay, and what did we do with it? Stared at me, I Stared at me. And it... <laughs> 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 <la